Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorello Show. This is Jack Benedict, and we're going to talk IUP Crimson Hawks football. It's wonderful to be talking football in December, no question about it. Coach, what a game, 27-22. to 22, You beat Assumption and move on. Some people have told me, said, this is the best game I've ever seen at Miller Stadium. People who have been around a long time, you've seen a lot of games at Miller Stadium. It's always better when you win, but it was a thriller, wasn't it? Yes, it, it was uh, a, a game that had a lot of uh, peaks and valleys, a lot of momentum swings. Uh, I think the best thing that I said after the game uh, to really uh, put the exclamation point on it, we were resilient and relentless. Uh, to overcome the five turnovers, four turnovers and an onside kick in one half, and then relentless in the last eight minutes of the game to hold uh, them to a field goal down inside our five, and then, to, you know, I'm calling our last drive the drive now, so you might want to take, take that and run with I it. I know where that comes from. Um, a 13-play 13 13-play, 76-yard driver. We only had one negative play, a minus two-yard run. We ran the ball every play except one. We threw a screen. But uh, we just we, we took the ball on the 26-yard uh, line and drove it down the field and ran the ball. They knew we were running it, and we still ran it. We imposed our will. The great thing about it is not only did we take the lead, we, we scored a touchdown, so it took field goal for them out of place because they've got a great kicker, and we only left them about a minute nine seconds to go with one time out left. So it, 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 it was a Picasso, I told Coach uh, Gregory and Coach Campolo and Coach Barker, you couldn't have a better drive uh, in regards to uh, obviously scoring the touchdown, but also the the time that we used and to not leave them a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. And still they threatened. Now uh, I saw your quote where you said initially that, there were, and we saw it too. There was no question he was over the line of scrimmage right. on the parent touchdown pass. Sure, even by more than a yard. Yes, yeah, it was no, not even close. I, I was concerned when he, I, you know, he could have ran the ball for 20 yards and they had a timeout left. So now they'll get the ball down on the 20 yard line and they, they're gonna have two shots probably. So I was concerned that oh, he's, he's running it and he was past the line of scrimmage. And my, my uh, opinion on it was, you know, they're gonna get down to the 20 and now they're gonna have two shots because uh, they still had a timeout, but you know, he was a yard and a half. So when he threw the ball, I knew, and the, the official was right next to me that threw the flag. Mm -hmm. So I knew exactly what was going on. I didn't even watch the ball. Uh, you know, at the end, I saw that they had, the, the, the guy had caught, caught it, but I knew it was coming back. Mm -hmm. And then you put JoJo in center field right. on the final Hail Mary attempt because you figured, I'm sure, if it's a jump ball, you got a guy who's 6'3". Right. Right? right, yeah. We, we have a, a thing where on the last play, uh, we put in some of our big receivers. Colby Hughes was banged up. He's another guy that we put in there. Uh, so we put Horner in there instead. Because uh, we needed some size back there for the for the hail mary knockdown pass, and uh, they you know they threw it into the into the sideline over there, and uh, we played it we played it pretty well, and it you know mm -hmm. obviously ended the game. We were still pretty positive at halftime, despite the adversity. You still had a one point lead. Absolutely, I told the team, hey, look, we've got four turnovers. We gave up a possession on an onside, onside kick. We're still winning 14-13, and we really had a touchdown there at the end of the half, a potential touchdown, uh, a catch by Swanee down on the 12-yard line that we got called for holding that was very questionable. I mean, we played the whole game and not one holding call was called. And, you know, how this was called holding, you know, sometimes you question because, I mean, I could see if they were calling holding the whole game, it was mm. probably a hold, but there were no holdings the whole game. And that, that hurt us because we were going to score again. We would have been up 21-13 going in at the half with all the negative things that happened and the situations that we put, were put in, we were actually very positive at halftime about, hey, we're controlling this game if you just take the turnovers out of it. Kickers for you did a great job. Yes, especially Sean Bowling on kickoffs, you know, because we had a plan for Harris. Uh, he was five for five on uh, his placement and where he put the ball, excuse me, on his kickoffs. We did a good job, except the last one, we missed two tackles. You know, they, they pitched it to Harris. We got the ball kicked perfectly where we wanted it. They pitched it to Harris. <laughs> we had a tackle at the 17-yard line we missed, and then we missed another one at the 25. And it ended up going out to the 45, 48-yard line, which was, was a problem. But, I mean, if we just make the tackle, uh, you know, we'd, he would have been under 20 yards of return. Mm -hmm. Defense did a great job for you um, numerous times. Uh, 
just had to hold them early in the game, keep in the game with the adversity. Terrific job. Well, you look at it, they had uh, four sudden change possessions. Okay, you don't count the interception for a touchdown because we didn't go out and play defense, obviously. They had four sudden change possessions, and three of them were deep in our end, and they only scored six points. They kicked two field goals. We stopped them on fourth down, and we made them punt on the other one. So, you know, potential of 28 points, we only gave up six. Uh, the, the key in the game really ends up being the red zone. We were in the red zone four times. We scored four touchdowns. They were in the red zone five times. They only scored one touchdown, kicked mm -hmm. three field goals, and we had a fourth down stop. So when you take everything out of the game, uh, the bottom line is we scored touchdowns in the red zone, and they didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, your freshman running back's really doing the job. Justice Evans, wow. He's going to get 1,000 yards probably here. What a terrific well, job. He, all for three a, of them. For a guy that he, was a wide receiver. You know, he played great. Uh, Dwayne Braun ran. All three of our running backs in a meeting this morning we talked. I thought all three running backs were tremendous. Uh, you know, Justice just ended up getting the ball a little bit more than uh, Samir. And then Dwayne was doing a lot of the short yardage goal line stuff for us. And he, he had a couple great runs. Samir had a great 16-yard run that he made uh, out of really not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And then Justice was unbelievable. But our offensive line now, when you look at that last drive uh, of the game, they, they totally took the game over. I mean, it, it, it totally took the game over. They knew we were running it, and they still couldn't stop us. I talked with Coach Campolo early in the week about the 93 line uh, that took uh, you know, sure. to the national championship and this line. There are a lot of similarities there. Well, you know, the, the way we sit now with Rocco out, we only have uh, one senior in that offensive line, Jerron Searles, who's playing great. Uh, you know, we've got uh, uh, McAllister at guards, a sophomore, Peterson's a junior, you know, and we're sitting in there with Auburn, our right guard is a true freshman, played outstanding game, outstanding game. And then Jeff Arnold's a sophomore. So uh, four of those five guys are, are, are underclassmen. And then we add to that with, with Gabe Diaz and Kenny Roman when we put our big people out there in some of our big packages. And... Uh, you know, we're getting a lot out of all seven of those guys. I think anybody who saw Assumption said this was really a good team. Where do they fit in, like, with the t opposing teams you've played, either in the conference or non-conference? Well, I, th I think the thing that they do is they play to their strengths. Uh, they, they create a lot of turnovers. Uh, they're very opportunistic on offense. Uh, they're really good on special teams. They're very well coached. They know where their strengths are. I think defensively, uh, we knew we would run. And, you know, we did run for 340 yards on them, but they try to create turnovers, and they did that in the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, the key was they didn't hurt us in the kicking game like they hurt most. They, they got their turnovers and then some, but they didn't hurt us in the kicking game. And uh, offensively, they really didn't have any big plays. Their longest game was 23 yards, and we stopped them in the red zone. But they're, they're – a good, really good football team, very well coached. Uh, we knew it would be a tough game. Uh, we just thought that, that our ability to be able to run the ball and stop their run would be a huge factor in the game, and that's what it ended up being at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's West Florida now. Cinderella team, I guess we say. You know, they second year of existence, amazing that they've made it this far. Uh, to their credit, they were 5-6 and six last year, coached by Coach Shinnick, who's – Father, those of us that go back, remember Don Shinnick with the Baltimore Colts. Tell us about this. Normally we see Florida teams, we think of speed. Is this true? Most likely. You know, they, uh, they like to throw the ball. They will run it. They've got some good receivers. Uh, they're really athletic. they got a big quarterback. They're young. Uh, you know, on offense, they have eight starters that are freshmen or sophomores because they're a two-year program. Most of their transfers that are older kids are playing on their defense, and their defense is really good. Uh, so they're another team that's pretty opportunistic. They've won a lot of close games. They've played six of their last seven games on the road. Uh, they've been on the road three times in the playoffs. One, out of the six out of their last seven wins, four of them have been by six points or less. So they've won in a lot of close games. Uh, they play in the so-called Division II SEC. Uh, you know, you got North Alabama, you got West Alabama, you got West Georgia, you got Vidalsta State, 
you got Delta State. Uh, you know, there's not an easy game in that, that those whole. Those names I are mean, their all, schedule's brutal. Yeah, those names are all familiar to football fans because of, at one time or another, they've all been powers. Yes, and they, and they uh, you know, Vidalsta State beat West Florida, and they didn't even make the playoffs. They, they, they came in fifth place in there because they had four teams from that conference. Now, you're not talking about the whole Pennsylvania conference like we are. We had four teams. They're just a conference with seven or eight teams. I think it's seven teams, and four of them made the playoffs. Wow, so yeah. they're, they're, every week they're playing superior talent and superior programs. They're on a great roll. Uh, they, they know how to win close games, you know, obviously very well coached. And, uh, you know, they, they play great on the road. Mm -hmm. So what is your key to the game right now? Uh, of course, we're early in the sure. week. But and this things have transpired during the course of the week. But right. your thoughts? I, I think the thing you have to watch when you get to this point, you get into big games, and now you're down to the Final Four. I think you still have to worry about what we do. You know, I don't think we can change things and try to match up things for what West Florida does. I think we got to we have to continue to do what we do offensively, defensively, and the special teams. Uh, feel like if we do it well and we execute well, we have a good chance to win. Uh, I don't think we want to change a whole lot. And, you know, I think there comes a point in time when you're 13 and 0, you say, hey, you know what, let's let them worry about us. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're playing at home again. We, you know, right now that's turned into a, a love fest, so to speak. I mean, <laughs> between the crowd, the fans, the noise, uh, the community. Just the community, the, you know, 176 texts after this game. Uh, didn't have my phone with me, went back uh, about an hour and a half later. Emails, et cetera, et cetera, former players. Uh, so it's been, it's been a great run up to this point. But, uh, you know, our guys and, and as a staff, you know, and as a program, we feel like, you know, we still have some things left to do. Yeah. Uh, bring us up to date as of right now on Max Redfield. I know a lot of people concerned right. about him and want to know how he's doing. He had a dislocated hip, got him to the hospital, uh, went through a surgery where they got his hip back in place. We went and brought the game ball to him Saturday night. He got relief, released Saturday night, has been in the training room. Uh, he's going to get an MRI today. Uh, for the dislocated hip, the one thing they say is the best thing is if you can get it back in place as fast as possible and you know get it taken care of right away that's huge in the process of the rehab and so forth and the severity of the injury so we'll know a little more obviously today with the MRI but uh, for as serious of an injury as it is we probably are in the best case scenario mm -hmm. uh, he was really you know a big loss for us there in the second quarter uh, so you know we're going to be playing without him, obviously. And uh, we felt like we got through the game without anybody else really seriously hurt. Mm -hmm. So uh, other than Max and Rocco Esposito, we, sh we should have everybody ready you, to go. You're pretty deep in the secondary. I mean, guys that have played a lot. Yes, and very flexible. We've got a couple guys, uh, Davis, Doe, Turner, that can play different positions. So that helps us in regards to for five positions, we have six or seven guys. and. You know, they, they were flexible enough that certain guys can play two positions. So, uh, you know, we played the whole second half and, you know, half of the second quarter with uh, Eric at safety replacing Max. We also have the ability uh, with Anthony Davis, who's a corner, he could play safety. Uh, Takai Turner's played some different spots. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be okay. Okay, I'm going to bring up one other thing. This is a, a family-related thing. We talked with your wife, Michelle, <laughs> and did a halftime, you know, for our radio presentation. But she brought up some interesting things. For instance, the nutritional end of it. She's very much into that. And how that, well, how has that helped your team? Well, her and Lori Smith, are obviously Smitty's wife, who's a dietitian, have taken a look at, you know, uh, different things, pre-game meal, the night before the game, what we're eating, and they've, you know, basically ordered us to make changes, and we have done that. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot with, with uh, nutrition and, and rest, rest time. Uh, we've probably spent as least amount of time on the practice field as we've had in years. Uh, so, you know, for the long haul, and that's why we talk about we're built 
uh, for this long run and for the playoffs. The, the only thing I was going to ask you is, did you have enough time on the halftime? So, because <laughs> my wife perfect. can go pretty long. She was okay. perfect. It was. It worked out beautifully. Great. Great. And she also said how calm you are. Well, that's great. She yeah. probably is lying a little bit, but that's fine. <laughs> well, no, that's all. It, it was great. It was really a lot of fun and and. Uh, Aspects that the, the the fan, the you know, the everyday fan maybe just doesn't think about. Hey, you know what? Everything plays a part into this, not just going out and blocking and tackling. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I watched the video yesterday of uh, our last drive, and I see Justice breaking a run along our sideline. He's running down inside the 15-yard line, and I see uh, Campy's son, my two younger sons, my older son, you know, fist pumping and you know, yeah. going crazy on the sideline there on that last drive. So uh, everybody feels a part of it, which is great. You can do that at this level. You yeah. can't really get that at the Division One level. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's hope the fans come out. Uh, you know, it's not often we get a semifinal game at home. Believe me, it's, it's a rarity. This is the seventh time in the semifinals. But since 1999, that hasn't happened. Right. Well, in 99, we were on the road. We went to Northwest Missouri. We had a really, as you remember, a great chance to win that game. Got beat at the end. Um, I guess would have been a 93, or when was the last time we had a national semifinal? 93, 93. North Dakota. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, the same result will get us to the national championship, and then hopefully we can make that change and win that this year. All right. Hey, good luck, Coach. Thanks, Jack. Coach Tortorella, come on out and see this team play. Boy, if you haven't been there, you're really missing something. We thank the coach. We wish him the best of luck, and we'll have radio and TV coverage for you this weekend. For Coach Tortorella, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.